What was our starting amount for this? Uh, same, it's 0 0.0026 mole. Oh no, that's zero and zero. Because we haven't made yeah, any of these yet. This going yeah, we're putting in this, but it hasn't had a chance to dissolve yet. Yeah, all right, all right, now we can figure out the change. Now, how do you know that all of this is going to dissolve because you put in an amount that's exactly equal to yeah. the solubility? So now is the logical time to put in this change. So now we can put in this change of negative 0 0.0026. We know that there's, uh, we can still completely dissolve this. And then you correctly figured out that this change would be positive 0 0.0026 because these both have coefficients of 1. And you've made, um, you, made, uh, you avoided the mistake that many people would make. Most people would say that this should also be 0 0.0026, but you saw you had to multiply by 2. So it's good that you were careful about that. 0 0.0026 times 2, you got 0 0.0052. Yeah. So this is one of the most common mistakes people make, ignoring this 2. This number should be, this number should be twice this one, because this coefficient is yeah. twice this one. All right, now we can do the end row. So it's going to be 0 and Pretty easy. But of course, you can't do the end row unless you've got the initial row. In acid and bases, we always like if we are given the left side, I mean the reagent, then like we start from zero is on, um, you know, yes. in acid yeah. and bases. That's right. right. So There's a lot of similarities here between uh, to how we do this and how we do acid yeah, and bases. Except the um, super saturation because here yeah. it doesn't, I mean, here that's it right. Is. Yeah, so um, th there's also some differences. Okay, so I think we finished step two. Mm -hmm. So okay. now what? We can simplify this by simply writing down this equation. Q equals KSP. KSP. Since we're in equilibrium, we know that Q equals the KSP. And how would I write down the Q? I would write it down like this. Okay. And I shouldn't write anything for the KSP in this case, because that's what I'm trying to figure out. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to figure out the KSP, so I shouldn't write anything in for that. So this is the best way to start with this equation, Q equals KSP. Do I need to include the charges in the yeah, it's uh, yeah. We should include those charges. Okay. That won't affect the problem, but it gets good to put those in. So, and we need to find multiply by 2? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Let's talk about that after we finish the problem. Good. So what's the answer to the question? It's a uh, 7.0304 e to the minus 8 equals okay. ks. Good. Okay. I'll just round that off to 7 times 10 to the negative 8. That's a pretty small number, but that's OK, because the, this is apparently a salt that's not that soluble. Notice that it's really not that soluble. We were able to saturate the solution by only adding 0 0.0026 molar. So we only had to add a very small concentration before we saturated the solution. So it makes sense that the KSP would be kind of small. On the other hand, so notice that um, if the solubility is small, the KSP tends to be small. And if the KSP is small, the solubility tends to be small. But the, they're not the same thing. Notice that the solubility here is 0 0.0026, and the KSP is 7 times 10 to the negative 8. So even though they're related, they're not the same number. And uh, the relationship between them is a little bit tricky. Mm -hmm. And we won't have time to get, get into all the details there. But in, in general, uh, in general 
Um, lower solubilities tend to give you lower KSPs. All right, we won't get into the complications. All right, well, this is a really classic type of problem that you're likely to see on the test. And actually, um, you, you, figured, you pretty much figured this all out. So this is good. So what did we do in this case? In this case, which of these problems did they give us? Here, we were given the solubility. And they asked us to find the KSP, and we showed how to use this method to do that. We wrote down the ice table. Now, what did I mean by saturate the solution? Well, now you can see what I meant. I meant start with an amount of salt that is equal to the solubility. And in this case, you saw the trap. We can't use the gram solubility. We had to convert that into molar solubility. All right, and you also avoided uh, another trap. This is twice this number. Mm -hmm. And we have to square this. So what happens here is this number two made, had two different effects. This coefficient had two different effects. One effect it had is that we had to, this number was double this number. And the other effect it had is that we had to square this. And most people mess up because they don't remember both of those effects. Sometimes they remember to multiply by two, but they forget to square. Or sometimes they remember to square, but they forget to multiply by two. Okay. Well, if we're really careful, we shouldn't forget either of those if we write everything out like we did here. The way I have this written on the board is the exact way I would recommend writing this on your own, on the test. Write the ice table, write Q equals KSP, write the expression. This is the exact notation that I think okay. is good for solving these problems. Okay, and this was not that easy of a problem. Um, one thing I want to mention here is that in this case, we didn't need to use any X's, right? Yeah. We didn't need any X's because we knew how much was going to dissolve. But I want to warn you, there are some problems where you don't know how much is going to dissolve. And if you don't know how much is going to dissolve, it's okay to use X. So okay. maybe later we'll see problems where we have to use X's. So you have to decide. Some problems, you, you know how much is going to dissolve, and you can put in a number. And if you don't know how much, you have to use X's.